Shalom the forerunners, like it was in the days of Enoch, while well, he have seen prophetic coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here we are now in this end time age, where the prophetic movement preparing the way for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ being awake. John the Baptist, we know he was the forerunner with the spirit and the power of Elijah, preparing the way for the first coming of the Lord Jesus. Jesus spoke of John, that John was greater among all the prophets. And you may thinking and meditating and study the letters of John, what he was preaching, what he taught about. John was preparing the way by baptizing the people into the repentance of sins. Yet he didn't perform any miracles. He didn't cleanse the lepers. He didn't multiply the oil in the, in the vessels, like in the days of Elijah and Elisha. He didn't heal anybody. He didn't heal the lepers. He didn't raise the dead. He did not shut the heavens that the rain will not pour out like in the days of Elijah. Yet, the spirit and the power of Elijah was inside of John. So what it makes John the greater among other prophets? I was thinking and meditating an entire season and have write this prophetic book, the prophetic at the end of the age, to help the people who are called into the office of the prophet, who are called into the prophetic movement and the prophetic gifts, to understand the time and the season, and to understand the spirit of prophecy, which John also described in Revelation 19, verse 10, that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. What it makes John greater among the prophets is this, that all the prophets, all the way from Enoch, Moses, Elijah, and Elisha, and Isaiah, all these minor prophets, major prophets, they were all prophesying. They have seen thousands of years ahead through the spirit of prophecy. He is coming. The message was, He is coming. He is coming. But John has seen and behold the Lamb of God with his own eyes. And his message was, He is here. So the message of the prophet John was the greatest because he beheld with his own eyes the Lamb of God and confessed that he would take away the sin of the world. And he prophesied that this is the Lamb of God that Isaiah had seen 2,000 years early and prophesied about the Lamb of God in Isaiah 53, that he would take away the sin of the world. John had beheld him. John was holding the Lamb of God. And while he came to Jordan, Jesus Christ, to be baptized by John, for not he didn't know, he didn't commit any sin. Jesus did not have any sin, but to fulfill the righteous. So he submitted himself into the authority of John, the old movement, to make a way for the new move, the sonship, from the servanthood movement to the sonship. This is the, the two generations, Elijah and Elijah, Moses and Joshua. Paul and Timothy, two generations, and also three generations that Joel prophesied that the Holy Spirit, the spirit of prophecy, would be pouring out. Now we are, as the book of Hebrew talk about having the spirit of prophecy inside of us. The spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, is a spirit of prophecy. It's a spirit that enables us to see. And Apostle Peter, on the day of Pentecost, he was preaching to the Jews and some other 70 nations that they came to celebrate the Shavuot, we know as a day of Pentecost, the leavened bread, the tabernacles, and all those feasts, he was preaching, saying in Acts chapter 3, verse 19 through 20, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sin may be blotted out, 
so that the time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. That he may send Jesus Christ, who has preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the time of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. Holy prophets. So heaven must help Jesus until the restoration of all things. Now the restoration of all things taking place, the dynamic of the fivefold, the apostle, prophet, evangelists, and pastors and teachers with the purpose of equipping the saints for the work of the ministry, taking the position to train, to equip the church of Christ. And also in the first Corinthians chapter 12, Paul described this eight and nine form ministries, including the healing ministries, working of miracles, helping and administration of those ministries, coming together in the restoration of all things. For that kind of church, Jesus have planted with 120 in the day of Pentecost. And in this age of restoration, in the age of 21st century, what was lost in the first century, which is entire fivefold ministries being restored now. And this in this rapid time and the time of exhalation, acceleration, in the time of the Holy Spirit taking over what was, what is, and what shall become. In, in the full measure of the spirit of prophecy, the revelation of Jesus. We know with the spirit of prophecy of Jesus who was in the days of the early apostles, in the days of the gospels. We know Jesus who is and begins to manifest himself in the early 900s in the Azusa streets. That through these outpourings of the Holy Spirit upon all flesh in California, now in 21st centuries, we are learning and preparing for Jesus who is to come. And we are the company of the end time apostolic prophetic movement. The prophetic at the end of the age, preparing the second coming of the Lord Jesus. There are many beautiful voices, the fathers of the prophets, just like Billy, Bill Hammond and many others who have been taught in the spirit and the power of prophecy for 60 years, trained and equipped, and is very prophetic as well, that they was preparing for Isaiah 60 for all the prophets and apostles and evangelists and pastors and teachers to come together in one heart, in one accord, in one mind for the, for the purpose of restoration all things and release Jesus, second coming of the Lord Jesus. And remember this, the gospel of the kingdom of God must be prophesied, must be proclaimed, must be preached into the end of the age and the end will come. And in that book, you also, many of you are prophetic intercessors, you will learn. You will learn all about the false prophets. I devote the entire chapter to deal with the false prophets. You will be taught also about the prophet of prophets, that is Jesus Christ, the head of the church. And in your spirit of your understanding in your heart being enlightened, while you will Literally, read through those pages. It is like the wind of the Spirit will quicken it to you. I remember I was doing some exercise uh, in, my, in my early days, last, uh, the beginning of this year, actually. And while I was just exercising and take a break between the sets in the gym, suddenly the Spirit outside of my belly rose and confessed. I believe in God and his holy apostles and prophets. So are you. You believe in God. You believe in his holy apostles and his holy prophets. You write to us. We can send you the book. We could train you. We can equip you. We can help you along. To hear the voice of God. God is speaking all the time. God is speaking all the time. And all his sheep. In the book of John chapter 10. The sheep of Jesus. They hear his voice. 
They don't follow the strange voices. Now you may hear lots of voices throughout media and mass media, but do you hearing the voice of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, that navigating you through the storms of life, through your circumstances, through your, through your time of difficulties, when there is, there is nowhere to turn but to Jesus and to hear his voice, this is the way to walk. His voice, it transforms everything. All you need sometimes is the one word from God. Because he created in the beginning of Bereshit, we know as a book of Genesis in English, that God created everything through the power of his word, and he sustained everything in the Hebrew chapter 1 by his word. In the beginning was the word, the word is Christ. Everything was created through the word of God. You was created through the word of God. Your call, your purpose, your plan. Your marriage was created by God. Everything, your children was created by God. Isaiah prophesied that he created everyone in the palm of his hand. And he, he prophesied also through the, through, through the prophet Ezekiel that all souls are belongs to God. All earth, all gold and silver is God because he created and he gave the dominion to the sons of men that they may rule and reign. For this purpose, you and I was redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, and He put inside of us the spirit of prophecy to testifying that Jesus Christ is alive. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we know Jesus, who was, is. And we're learning in the book of Revelation of Jesus who is to come. Therefore, you must hear His voice so that you will not miss the second coming of the Lord Jesus. You will not miss the still, small voice on the inward parts that telling you this is the solution. This is the answer. This is the way. This is the direction to take. This is the, the time of going forward. This is the time of moving and advancing in the kingdom of God. Beloved, write to us, contact us, call us. My number is plus 66 90 75 90 64 7. You can call me. If you are those prophets who have been hiding in the cave and all you need is to activate. I just come back from, from uh, land of Malaysia while we were activating the prophets, all it takes is just walk around this crown of prophets as God was walking around us in the prophet uh, uh, Zechariah as a wall of fire and his glory in the mid midst. And they were activated that dormant gift inside of them. Many of them, they have a treasure in the earthly vessels. They are born again, but they don't know the callings. They don't know the giftings. They don't know who they are in Christ. They don't know the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. They don't know how to yield to the Holy Spirit to bearing the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. They don't know the, the nine spirits of God. The one Holy Spirit, but nine characteristic of the Holy Spirit described in Isaiah 11 and in the book of uh, Revelation. So you will be taught practically and spiritually, and be activated all those gifts, and then you will be able to grasp and understand because what was hidden will come to the surface, just like gold. You're mining the gold. You have to pay attention. You have to give efforts. You have to dig in the gold. You have to go to the darkness. The gold is hidden in darkness. So are the treasures, the precious stones, the, the, the sapphire, and diamonds, and gem. They are all hidden in deep darkness. You have to make efforts to dig them out and, and polishing them and bring them to the surface. That thing was happened in the miracle where the Bible school was being built by the disciples of Elijah. They were building the Bible school. But of course, students, they don't know much. They are just green. They are learning. If, if you, they will learn something about woods and 
how to cut the trees, how to cut the log. They will, they will, they will know that before you you cutting the trees, you you have a wooden wooden stick that you will uh, put into the handle and you will dip in the water overnight. That this handle will stuck with the iron head, and no matter how you swing, it will not come off. But of course, the Bible students, just like many of you, being ignorant towards the spiritual gifts that Paul the Apostle described in the 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1, he says, My brethren, I will not have you ignorant. People are dying in ignorance. Ignorance in Hebrew, it means having un, unworkable knowledge, having no experience. I will not have you unaware towards the spiritual gifts. One of them are gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I teaching on the gifts of, of, of the prophecy. And I also teaching on the office of the prophet. What is the difference? And while we know and when we understand, when we know our gift, we speaking and activate that gift into your surface. And then you will be able like those eggs that they were chopping the tree and the head of the iron eggs fall into the bottom of the river. And they cry out to Elijah, Elijah, Master, Elas, Elas, what shall we do? He says, where it falls, the, the prophet asks. He says, there, there fall down there deep, maybe five, 10, 20 feet, 20 or 40 feet deep. Oh, we cannot swim. So he grasped that stick that they held, held in their hands and thrust it out. The activation of the supernatural take place. The Spirit of God intervened into the natural realm. And this iron X began to bubbling up, bubbling up, bubbling up to the surface. And he commissioning the disciples, reach out and touch it and grab it. And what was lost was found. Many of you have lost the call. Many of you have lost the dreams. Many of you have lost the desire of your heart. Many of you have lost the prophecy you give. God says, now is the time of restoration of all things. What you have been lost, now time to you to regain. And not only what you have been lost and robbed by the enemies who still can destroy, but God has come through Christ Jesus right now to give you life and to give you life in abundance and to invite you into the season of restoration, the prophetic in the end of the age. Beloved, we bless you in Yeshua Jesus Christ's name.